Facebook, what's up, YouTube? We appreciate you all being here as part of our HeartlandCollegeSports.com Week 5 Recap and Reaction Show. It's great to be with you as always as we get the show underway. If you're on YouTube, hit the like button. Subscribe as well if you're on Facebook. Share the video. We appreciate you guys doing that and uh, being a part of the show. As we talk Week 5, we're three underdogs in the Big 12, one outright. How about that? An impressive week of football for the Big 12 as it's been for, you know, the last several weeks. We know this league is absolutely stacked top to bottom. Uh, that's how good this conference is. And as we look at, you know, where we go from here, um, we are in for a wild next two months. If you're not watching Big 12 football, maybe you're a casual Big 12 football fan. Maybe you're more to the SEC, the Big 10. Those conferences are going to be so predictable so predictable you know in the SEC who's going to be there at the end you know in the Big Ten who's going to be there at the end nobody knows who's going to be there at the end of the Big 12 football season you can make a case right now for Oklahoma State Baylor Oklahoma TCU Kansas State Kansas uh, over half the conference you can make a case for being in the Big 12 championship game come the end of the year. What other league can you say that about right now? That other league does not exist. It's not out there. Sorry, it doesn't. So thanks so much for being a part of the show. If you were just on Facebook Live, I believe we uh, got disconnected accidentally. So we're just picking things up here and going to talk about all the games of the Big 12 conference this week. TCU smoking Oklahoma. My goodness, did you see that? TCU 55, Oklahoma 24. You know, Oklahoma started off 0-2 in Big 12 play in the COVID year of 2020. But they lost to Kansas State and they lost to Iowa State by a combined, hear me out here, a combined 11 points. They just lost to TCU by 31 points. I think TCU is a really good team. But this game was as much about how bad Oklahoma looks. They gave up 660-some-odd yards in this game to TCU. Uh, Max Duggan looked like Patrick Mahomes in this game. And, oh, wait, hold on. Is that Woody Washington getting another penalty? Oh, no, sorry. My eyes have deceived myself. Whoops. Uh, Woody Washington. I mean, the Sooners had seven penalties for 80-some-odd yards. They were a complete mess defensively. And even before Dylan Gabriel got hurt, and I know OU suffered a lot of injuries, Dylan Gabriel was not confident, was shaky, was missing passes, was not setting his feet. I, this looks like a guy, this is now two straight weeks for Dylan Gabriel, where he looks like what has happened um, is that he looks like a guy who stepped up from the AAC to the Big 12, and he doesn't realize what he's in for. That's what it looks like for Dylan Gabriel, the Oklahoma quarterback. So, you know, I think this OU team, I'm not saying it's 1998, John Blake, the time they went 0-2 in Big 12 play before 2020 when they finished 5-6. and six. I don't think it's that kind of a year. But I don't look to two years ago when they started off 0-2 in Big 12 play and then won the Big 12 title beating Iowa State. It's not that year either. It's somewhere in between because there are a lot of things that this Oklahoma team's going to have to figure out as they move forward. I mean, they, they are just, there are issues there, clear issues there, and they, they've they got to be worked out sooner rather than later for the Oklahoma Sooners. If not, it's going to be a long season when you look at OU's schedule. Texas this weekend. Kansas next weekend. I hope they don't get caught looking ahead to Kansas this weekend. Things you never thought you'd hear you say for 100. I, like, the schedule just gets tougher you got to go to Iowa State you've got Baylor I mean it is uh, there are no weeks off in the Big 12 unlike these other conferences and that's even the case for Oklahoma so things are changing they're changing quickly now also 11 a.m. game Kansas State beat Texas Tech I don't know if you guys saw this but at halftime on ESPN plus Chris Kleiman he uh, he's talking to the ESPN plus reporter and he goes yeah my team's got a uh, my guy's got a nut up and I'm like, wait, does Chris Kleiman just say his team has to nut up on ESPN Plus? Oh, he did. You better believe it, he did. And I was sitting there laughing hysterically. I just, I was cracking up. I'm like, wait, Chris Kleiman just talking about his team nutting up. 
It's like, now, Chris Kleiman's a guy's guy. He's a dude's dude. I'm cool with it. But I was also laughing my tail off about the whole thing. Like, jeez. <laughs> Uh, and he said it without like a care in the world, without even realizing I think he said it. Uh, but he's right. His team did need to nut up in the second half, and they did nut up in the second half. So they were up 13 nothing after the first quarter. Uh, they had a bad second quarter, led 13-10 at halftime, and then K-State went on to win 37-28. Adrian Martinez and Deuce Vaughn combined for over 340 yards rushing. That's how good those two guys were in the rushing attack on Saturday. They were outstanding. And it was so fun to watch them as well. I mean, they were just lights out. So, <coughs> excuse me, Adrian Martinez, his Heisman odds continue to get better and better and better and better. And I don't think Adrian Martinez is winning the Heisman Trophy, but, you know, you look at this dude the last couple of weeks, he had 171 rushing yards and three rushing touchdowns on Saturday against OU. It was darn impressive. What Adrian Martinez put together. And Donovan Smith didn't have a chance. He was getting sacked left and right. I think K-State had six sacks, ten tackles for loss. They were all over. All over Donovan Smith. So we knew and we know that Tech's offensive line is the weakest spot on the team. We saw that again on Saturday. It was one of the concerns I had going into this game. But I thought Tech could keep it close. Mostly because I wasn't sure how efficient K-State's offense was going to be given the up-and-down season. But, you know, I know that K-State fans are still going to be annoyed about that two-lane game, and they should be. But, man, you're at the top of the Big 12 standings as we, you know, get into the month of October. You're 2-0 and in Big 12 play, and you've got something cooking with Adrian Martinez and Deuce Vaughn when they are combining for 320 rushing yards uh, 340 rushing yards, excuse me, not trying to sell them short on the day. So K-State getting that good victory against Texas Tech on Saturday. Next up, Oklahoma State beating Baylor in Waco. Another underdog winning outright. Uh, TCU won outright as an underdog. Oklahoma State won outright as an underdog. And Kansas won outright as an underdog. We'll get to those Jayhawks coming up here shortly. But how about Oklahoma State getting revenge for last year's Big 12 championship game where they came up half a yard short of winning the Big 12 title? Now, I'm sure they would trade yesterday's win for the Big 12 title, but still, they looked really good. Give them all the credit in the world. Spencer Sanders, who threw seven interceptions against uh, Baylor in two games last year, had one pick yesterday, and he bounced back from that one pick as well, which was key. He bounced back from that one pick and uh, had a 49-yard bomb to Braden Johnson. That set up a touchdown right after he threw the interception. So he didn't lose his confidence, didn't lose his swagger, and Oklahoma State picks up a solid 36-25 win on the road against Baylor. And I'll tell you what as well, when I look at this, I, I thought that Baylor tried to work the run game too much here in this one. I thought that the weakness, we know the weakness for Oklahoma State defensively is the passing game, is the secondary. And like that safety, I'm like, y you know that Oklahoma State is very strong on the defensive line. You're back at your own half-yard line, one-yard line, whatever it might have been, and you're trying to run it out of the end zone with a running back who's five yards deep in the end zone. I... I know it's a little bit of Monday morning quarterbacking, but they're lining up. I'm like, what are they doing? You know what the strength of Oklahoma State is, and you're running right into the teeth of it at your own half-yard line, and then you get in the safety. That just didn't make a lot of sense to me for uh, Baylor, and there were things early on, and I know the third quarter was great. They scored 22 points, but you know Baylor scored 22 points in the third quarter and then a combined three points in the first, second, and fourth quarters. So, you know, that's where you say, what do we do wrong in the other three quarters? Where we lit them up for 22 in one quarter and we couldn't score more than three combined in the other three quarters. That's bad. That's a bad job. And Oklahoma State, you know, I, I thought they were good. I thought they were a team that would compete and could compete at the top of the Big 12. But, man, I, I, the non-conference wasn't very good. So I was kind of still a little hesitant 
But uh, they showed up. You win in Waco? Although I will say this. Saw a lot of stuff on social media about fans in Waco bailing out of McLean Stadium uh, early. I don't know what that was all about, but I saw the videos, and I'm like, come on, Baylor fans. Come on now. I know they were losing in the second half, but, geez, you got a top 15, top 20 team in the country. I know it's hot in Waco, but you got to be out there to support your guys. What's that all about? So Baylor falls to 3-2 and two overall. Uh, they're 1-1 one and one in Big 12 play. And uh, <laughs> this conference is just crazy week in, week out. And uh, the Cowboys, uh, they took care of business, a couple of late interceptions as well to steal the victory and move on to 4-0 and oh on the season for the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Uh, next up, yep, those 5-0 and oh Kansas Jayhawks. My goodness gracious, can you believe it? KU is 5-0, and oh, first time since 2009. They've got college game day coming to Lawrence next week, and we'll get to more of that coming up. But as much as um, I think about this game from a standpoint of Kansas winning, I can't help but also feel like Iowa State blew this one. They missed three field goals. Two of them hit the upright. The last one in the final minute of regulation would have tied the game, and it was wide left, was never close. I mean, that was just brutal. That was brutal for Iowa State, who finally hired a special teams coordinator this season. And, you know, it cost them again. It cost them again in that department. They had a muff punt. It didn't lead to any points. But, man, the special teams killed Iowa State in this game. Their defense played really well. They had Jalen Daniels bottle up a lot of the afternoon. He had his worst game of the year by far. He had like 10 rushing yards and 70-some-odd passing yards. But, man, special teams and the offensive line, weak. Iowa State had less than one yard per carry on the afternoon. A lot of people are getting on Hunter Deckers, but Hunter Deckers was, you know, he was getting sacked. He was getting hurried left and right. He never had time. He had no running game to speak of. I don't think it's Hunter Deckers who's overrated or anything like that. I think you got an offensive line that can't get you any push. And if you can't run the ball at all, though, at least keep defenses honest, uh, you're not going to have the success that you want to have. But Kansas's defense, to its credit, also picked up its offense. You know, uh, it was the Kansas offense that was getting all the attention, rightfully so. They came in averaging nearly 50 uh, points per game. But you also then saw... The defense. You saw the defense pick up the offense, play its best game of the season by far. And, uh, you know, Kansas got outgained in this game by 100 yards, 313 to 213. I mean, this was Iowa State's game to win, and they blew it. And now you got a situation where Kansas is 5-0. and They're a game away from being bowl eligible by mid-October. They're in first place, tied for first place in the Big 12. I mean, it's getting crazy in Lawrence. You got TCU coming to town next week. My goodness, college game day is going to be here for the first time ever. College game day is going to be in Lawrence. I'm debating what to do about that. You know, I'm right here in Kansas City. Uh, I've never been to a college game day. So do we have a Heartland College Sports tailgate? What can we do? What should we do if you're a KU fan, uh, KU alum? I am open to ideas and suggestions. Just email me, Pete Mundo, M-U-N-D-O, at heartlandcollegesports.com because uh, I want to make sure we're taking advantage of this moment as well. These are exciting times in Lawrence. You better believe that. You better believe that after KU beats Iowa State, moves to 5-0. Uh, and 0. Iowa State is now 3-2 and 0-2 and and in Big 12 play, and they've got K-State coming to town this weekend for Farmageddon. Not easy at all. Not easy. Next up, the last game of the night, of the day, in the Big 12 was none other than Texas hosting West Virginia. This game was over. If you turned in the game a little bit late, uh, Texas jumped out to a 28 to nothing lead in this one. It was not close. I mean, you're looking at this game and you're saying to yourself, Hey, West Virginia, you had a week and a half off. You played last Thursday. You're opening up, well, not opening up Big 12 play because they played Kansas a couple of weeks ago, but you're restarting Big 12 play against the mighty Texas Longhorns. Everybody wants to beat them because they're leaving for the SEC, and you threw up a stinker like that. 
down 28 nothing in the blink of an eye. And I know the final score, you say 38-20. Yeah, maybe not that bad. No. They scored 13 garbage points in the fourth quarter. It was 35-7 to at the end of three. The game was over. The Mountaineers were embarrassed. Like, yes, kudos to Texas. Hudson Card threw for 300 yards. Bijan Robinson rushed for 100. Xavier Worthy, uh, you know, 119 receiving yards. Trickery as well from from Texas. But this is one of those games when you say, is Neil Brown the man for the job? Like, that's... I, I don't know what other conclusion you can come to. They were unprepared. They were undisciplined in this game, especially in the first half when it mattered. They had four penalties for 48 yards in this game in the first half. I think they finished with that number, but second half didn't really matter. The game was over. You're looking at this and you're saying, wow, this is embarrassing. I, this is embarrassing. And, and Neil Brown, you look at his record now, he's like 11 and 18 in, in Big 12 play, I believe it is. And uh, 19 and 21 overall as the head coach. Like it's, not a good situation at all for Neil Brown. I know that the buyout's big and everything else, but jeez. Let me just make sure I have that number right for Neil Brown. That way I'm not giving any uh, false information here. Neil Brown, as the head coach in his fourth year, is 19-21 and 21 overall. I was pretty close. And 11-18, and 18, I nailed it in Big 12 play. His fourth season on the job. Neil Brown doesn't have a notable win as West Virginia's head coach in his fourth year on the job. West Virginia fans have been asked to trust the climb. They've trusted the climb. They've done everything that's been asked of them. And it has not been returned. And they've got some pieces. Like, you've got JT Daniels. You've got CJ Donaldson. You've got that defensive line. You should not find yourself down 35-7 to against Texas when you've had a week and a half off to prepare for this game. That's no. So every game is, is typically more about one team than the other. And I'm not saying Texas can't be good. They can't compete for a Big 12 title. They can be there at the end. We all know that. We know the talent that Steve Sarkeesian has. But man, oh man, this game is about West Virginia and what they didn't bring to the table on Saturday. That's what this game is about. Pete Mundo, HeartlandCollegeSports.com is, of course, how you find us each and every day. Ton of written content. We've got podcasts. If you're watching this on Facebook or YouTube, just know we've got podcasts as well. Subscribe on iTunes. But also, since you're on YouTube right now or Facebook, make sure you share the video on Facebook and subscribe to us on our YouTube page. We've got a ton more content uh, coming your way. I promised you that before the season. We have held to that standard. So thank you guys for continuing to be a big part of this show and uh, what makes this show successful. We don't have any big conglomerates behind us like a CBS or an ESPN or a 24-7 sports. It's just you, it's me, and grassroots, baby. That's how this has always been done. So thank you for being a part of the show. Thank you for sharing it. And um, we'll talk to you guys soon. Have a great rest of your day. And make sure you're subscribed to all of our channels so you never miss a show. Take care, guys. Have a great day. We'll talk to you.